So, uh, so yeah, uh, feel free to. Which one should I take? So. Well, you. Yeah. It's like, I'm still not sure yeah. when that, that, that immediacy yeah. is what I... Well I have been playing a lot of different basses and I have a lot of different basses which I, and I enjoy them all for different reasons. I do have favourite go-to things, things that I know I can rely on and that aren't just there for something, for the odd thing to be different. There's kind of a feeling in what, what you want to try, what you're waiting for, so you can just... They're always so nice to play. Because I tend to play, like my, my old jazz bass is a passive instrument that uh, you work to get the sound, but it's so rewarding because it's so responsive, and what I want from the, I call it the go-to instruments, is that ability for them to respond to what you're doing, to where you play, to how hard you, you pluck the string. And some instruments um, almost are self-compressing or have uh, a, a narrower area where they sound great. Perhaps they don't sound so great if you play lightly or they don't sound so great if you play heavy. And they, they kind of need to be treated like that and played like that all of the time. Um, but I like instruments where they can kind of take everything. They, they can be um, played softly and gently and, and just speak differently. But then you can really dig in. And this one is ridiculous for that. It's got um, so much character that you can just get out of it from from different hand position, different attack on the note, rolling the tone a little, rolling the pickup a different way. It just responds so well and it's just got a natural body. which is what I was wanting. I didn't want to feel that I was getting another bass that was a, um, a cool instrument. There's no doubt I knew it was going to be, a, these instruments are great. They're so lovely to play that I knew it would be a, a bass that I wanted to pick up and play all of the time, but I want it to be a bass that I want to hear all of the time, not just feel. Um, and that's why I feel particularly happy. adjustments and then chuck in different uh, tension meters for tone controls and, and throwing some different pickups see what how uh, you know different windings affect things and it's been interesting and very fruitful and surprising a bit as well and uh, can you open the uh, no turn the base around and uh, no uh, the back look into it what what's the color of the tone cap is it white? White, yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Uh, then I want it to the operation table. <laughs> I have a preference for certain things, or I thought I did. I have a preference for certain uh, woods and uh, brooches. Uh, and 
initially I thought those preferences were going to remain true when I picked things up off the wall out of the two bases that uh, Tom had, had kind of put together and suggested that I try first, certainly consider first. We even tried messing around with different bodies um, as well and different, different necks and it's amazing how two pieces of alder that are essentially the same weight and whatever well, you can still sound different. <laughs> I ex expected to um, try some things that were, were great and kind of know that um, the starting point was already going to be very high. Um, I kind of felt that I'd already pretty much decided on what I was hoping to be the one, as I said, with, uh, with the different wood combination. Um, and I didn't expect to necessarily want to, or even find the benefit from changing so much, from having little little things. But what was great was um, Tom's ability to, to kind of listen and chat and then kind of suddenly pop something else in my hands. And uh, and we kind of go, you know, I did, yeah, how's that happened? And some of it, um, even some of the things that weren't as preferable were still interesting. Some of the uh, mojo weights, bits of foam in the cavity. Uh, yeah, amazing. In its current, in the in the current matching, this is now winning. Okay. <laughs> even I with the, even with the those pickups in that I can't nah. recall. No, but we it's easy to. <laughs> experience of that you know I know that from being here before it's a it's a nice place to focus and be able to listen and a great way to be able to find out how to get those little uh, messages over and allow Tom to do his thing which is to kind of decipher the various adjectives or whatever but I think it's it's easier when He's able to hear what your preferences are or what your dislikes are by putting different things in your hands and then you can kind of say yeah a bit more like that yeah uh, what shall what shall we do what I'm gonna do is just, just go back to that again ended up with an um, older body with maple fingerboard, which I have a maple fingerboard bass, I have a 77 Jazz, which I don't play anywhere near as much as my, my 66 with the Rosewood fingerboard, and that has been, as um, a lot of my friends know, the, my main bass for years. Um, and. This is the, the the maple fingerboard has been the one that has come out on top for me. It's just absolutely killer. Sounds alive, but not just it's it's still it's not brittle and it's not super bright. It's it's just there, yeah. So older body and uh, maple fingerboard, but as we can see, it's a particularly super sexy fingerboard. Mm -hmm. Thank <laughs> you.